In this video, I will be presenting about the impulse response and causality of uh, LTI systems, which is linear time invariant systems. And uh, what we will do here today is, uh, first of all, understand what is the meaning of impulse response and the importance of the impulse response. And then we'll also go on to describe what is the causality property of LTI systems and the condition that the impulse response must satisfy in order for an LTI system to be a causal system and also understand the significance of causality. Okay, so to begin with, the impulse response, as the name suggests, is the response of the system when the input is an impulse function. So the output of a system to a unit impulse function as input is called as the impulse response of the system. And if we recall, the unit impulse function, also called as the delta function, is defined uh, as uh, having a value of 1 at time t equal to 0. And for all other values of time, it is equal to 0. So the impulse is defined only at t equal to 0, at which time it has a value of 1. So the impulse response is basically the output of the system when the input is a unit impulse function or a delta function. And the impulse response is conventionally denoted as h of t. Again, um, h of t here, as we have denoted, is the impulse response of a continuous, a continuous time system here. Now, the importance of the impulse response is that an LTI system is completely characterized by its impulse response. That means that if we know the impulse response of an LTI system, then we uh, we could compute the output of the LTI system for any other input signal x of t. So uh, that is why we say that the, the impulse response completely characterizes the LTI system. Next, we shall see what is the relationship between the impulse response of an LTI system and the output of the LTI system to any other arbitrary input x of t. So uh, if we know the impulse response h of t for the LTI system, and uh, uh, then we can compute what would be the output of the LTI system for any arbitrary input x of t, and that is given as uh, the output y of t to be equal to the convolution between the input signal x of t and the impulse response h of t. And also notice that uh, the convolution operation, which is denoted by the star operator here, uh, is a uh, commutative. So if we change the order of the convolution, the result remains the same. So the convolution operation is commutative. So uh, by knowing the impulse response of the LTI system, we can compute the output of the system y of t uh, for any input x of t as being the convolution between the input and the impulse response. And that is why we stated earlier that the uh, impulse response h of t completely characterizes the LTI system. It's like the, uh, it defines the properties and characteristics of the LTI system. Okay, and uh, to recall also, the convolution operation is given uh, by this expression over here. And uh, again, this is the convolution operation expression for the continuous time domain. Okay, similarly, we can uh, uh, develop a relationship between the input and output in terms of the uh, impulse response of the system for a discrete time system as well. So similarly, in the discrete time case, the impulse response of the discrete time system is the response of the system when the input is a unit impulse function in discrete time. And in discrete time, the unit impulse function is denoted as delta of n. And uh, it has a value of 1 for n equal to 0. For, and it has a value of 0 for n not equal to 0. So for all, for all other values of n, it is equal to 0. That means it is defined only for n equal to 0. The distinction between continuous time and discrete time is that the, the argument, uh, which is the parameter inside the brackets for discrete time, that is n, takes on only integer values. But uh, in the continuous time case, the parameter time, t, uh, can take on a continuous uh, uh, range of values. 
Okay, so the impulse response here is basically the output of the LTI system when the input is a unit impulse function or a delta function. And again, as in the continuous time case, uh, the convention to denote the impulse response is by the letter H. And for the discrete case, we write it as H of N in square brackets. So H of N denotes the impulse response of the discrete time LTI system. Now, again, um, the impulse response completely characterizes the LTI system. So that means we can compute the response of the LTI system, that is Y of N, to any arbitrary input X of N in terms of its impulse response as being the convolution between the input X of N and the impulse response H of N. And uh, as in the uh, continuous time case, the convolution operation is uh, commutative in the discrete time domain as well. So uh, changing the order of this uh, convolution will not affect the result. And the convolution operation uh, in discrete time is given by this expression here. So again, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to read more, uh, or to understand more uh, deeply in the convolution operation and its process, uh, you can check on my other videos which are uh, which illustrate the convolution process both in the continuous time domain as well as in the discrete time domain in much detail. So now we have here uh, the expressions for the convolution operation by uh, incorporating the commutative property. So we see here that the output of the LTI system y of t to any input x of t uh, can be computed as a convolution between the input and its impulse response and that is given by this integral over here and if we change the order of the convolution here then the corresponding expression the integral uh, changes to this form here and similarly in the discrete case we have the uh, expressions for the convolution operation and the uh, commutated version also is shown here again we will be using this uh, expressions later on to uh, to understand how these expressions uh, get altered uh, when we talk about causal LTI systems. So uh, what is causality of an LTI system? Uh, a system uh, is said to be causal if the output at any time depends only on the present and past input but not on future input. The uh, significance of this property is that uh, a system needs to be causal in order to be physically realizable and that seems quite logical. Uh, for example, how could we make a physical system that would produce an output now uh, that depends on an input that we would pro uh, provide to the system at a future time? For example, uh, how can we make a system uh, that would produce some output today uh, when we are going to give the input tomorrow, right? So how can this output of today uh, be dependent on, on, on an input that we will provide tomorrow in the future, right? So uh, such a system would not be physically realizable. So for the significance of the causality property is that you know, whatever system we develop, we have to ensure that it, uh, that it is causal so that it can be physically realized. So contrary, on the contrary, if a system is non-causal, uh, then uh, it implies that it, was, it is not physically realizable. So in terms of, uh, say, in, in the domain of electrical engineering, uh, how could we make, a, a, for example, a circuit which would produce an output that depends on a future input, right? That will not be physically realizable. So that is the significance of the causality property. And uh, later on, I'll be producing another video uh, illustrating this causality property in terms of uh, uh, filters. Filters are used in a wide range of applications. And in a different video, I'll be illustrating uh, the, the causality property of uh, uh, filters. Uh, and how certain characteristics of filters cannot be uh, realized in the phys in in reality uh, because they wouldn't be causal. Okay, so um, that is the significance of a causal system. And to basically look at it in simple terms is that uh, a causal system 
will not produce an output or a response before the input is applied. So whatever response it uh, produces will happen after the input is applied but not before the input is applied. Now we stated earlier that the uh, impulse response of a system completely characterizes the system. So uh, based on the impulse response, we could check whether the system is causal or not. So therefore, uh, the impulse response must satisfy some condition in order for the LTI system to be causal. So let us now see what is the condition that the impulse response must satisfy in order for the system to be causal. And that condition is that the impulse response should be equal to zero for t less than zero. And uh, that can be understood by looking at the input signal which is the impulse signal which is existing only at t equal to zero okay and when we apply this input the output that is produced is called as the impulse response so by definition of causality the output should not exist before the input so since the input is occurring only at t equal to zero there should not be any output before t equal to zero so that is what uh, this condition for causality in terms of the impulse response implies so the impulse response is zero for t less than zero. That is the impulse response is zero before the input occurs, before the trigger occurs. So uh, since the trigger is occurring at t equal to zero, the output should be zero before t uh, equals zero. So that means the impulse response h of t is equal to zero for t less than zero. So for t uh, less than zero, so you have zero here. Uh, for t less than zero, the output, uh, the impulse response h of t is equal to zero. And after uh, the trigger up, uh, trigger is given to the system, it starts to produce some output. Again, this is just an arbitrary output that I have shown, but the important point to remember here is that the impulse response will, re will remain zero before the input is applied. Okay, so that's the important point here. The next thing we will see is uh, for, or for a causal system, we will see how the uh, input-output relationship uh, changes in terms of the convolution integral, uh, given this condition uh, for causality is uh, uh, inferred, okay? So when we apply this condition of causality, that is h of t equals zero for t less than zero, that means uh, the argument here inside the bracket uh, becomes, you know, uh, when it is negative, then h of that value becomes zero. So this integral okay, will be uh, meaningful only for the range of h of t minus tau, which is positive. That means t minus tau should be positive, and that is true only when this tau is uh, less than t. So that means uh, this integral, the, the, the limits of this integral for a causal system will therefore become uh, from minus infinity to t. That means the variable tau should have values less than or equal to t because when it exceeds t this h of t minus tau will become negative uh, that means the index here will become negative and that means uh, it will become less than zero for uh, t minus tau less than zero the impulse response is equal to zero so this integral will become zero so therefore this integral uh, will have its uh, limits changed to from uh, uh, minus infinity to t uh, for the causal system, okay, and that uh, uh, comes from the fact that uh, h of t equals to zero for t less than zero, and uh, when we apply the commutative property and change the order of the uh, of the of the convolution operation, then we have this form for the convolution integral, and in this case, uh, h of tau uh, is non-zero only for tau. Uh, greater than or equal to zero okay so therefore the limits of integration change to zero to infinity and uh, that's the um, uh, the convolution integral for the uh, causal LTI system similarly we can see uh, the condition for causality for the discrete time causal system and as in the continuous case it is a direct one-to-one similarity so that that is the impulse response h of n is zero for n less than zero since the input occurs at n equal to zero there should not be any output before n equal to zero so that means before n equal to zero there is uh, the value of the output is zero 
and whatever output is produced is it happens after the, the, the trigger is applied so from n equal to zero onwards it can start producing some output and again uh, for the discrete time case we, we note that the index values take on only integer uh, values okay n takes on only integer values so h of n equal to zero for n less than zero so we see here all this is zero uh, for the discrete time causal system so uh, by observing the impulse response of the system we can check whether the system is causal or non-causal and uh, similar to the uh, continuous time case the convolution expression in the discrete time will have its limits changed uh, by applying the condition for causality for the impulse response. So since this h of n minus k will be non-zero only when this n minus k is positive, so or non-negative rather, so the limits of this summation will change from minus infinity to n. And similarly, if we uh, apply the commutative property and change the order in the convolution, then this h of k uh, will be non-zero only for uh, k uh, that is non-negative, right? So the, the values of k or the, or the limits of the summation will go from zero to infinity. So for a causal system, uh, the limits of the summation and in the continuous time case, the limits of the integration uh, get changed uh, simply because for other values, for other ranges, the impulse response is equal to zero, so the limits are altered in this way, okay? So uh, basically, to summarize this, the impulse response uh, is an important uh, feature of an LTI system uh, because it characterizes the LTI system completely. By knowing the impulse response, we can compute the output of the LTI system for any other input signal, and also we can check uh, various properties of the LTA system by observing its impulse response and uh, in this lecture uh, I have demonstrated and shown how we can check the causality property of the LTI system by observing the impulse response. So for a system to be causal the impulse response is equal to zero uh, for time uh, less than zero and uh, causality is an important property because it uh, gives us an indication whether a system can be physically realized or not, whether the system can be made in physical reality or not. Because if a system is not causal, uh, we cannot physically make that system. Uh, and that follows logically because uh, it wouldn't be possible to develop a physical system that would produce an output now for an input that is given in the future, okay? Because a causal system depends uh, has its output that depends only on the present and past inputs but not on future inputs if a but if a system is depending on a future input uh, or if, if the output of a system is depending on a future input then uh, such a system cannot be physically realized